West Virginia passed a new anti-transgender law earlier this year, banning trans athletes from participating on female sports teams in middle schools, high schools, and at colleges. And not long after that bill became law, my colleague Stephanie Rule pressed West Virginia Governor Jim Justice, asking him to provide any example of this being an actual issue in his state. Can you give me one example of a transgender child trying to get an unfair advantage, just one in your state? You signed a bill about it. No, I, I can't really tell you one. I think we only have 12 kids maybe in our state that are, are, are transgender type kids. Well, at least one of the transgender kids in West Virginia is now actively trying to get accountability because she's being negatively affected by that law. 11-year-old Becky Pepper Jackson wants to run cross country. I ran cross country in high, uh, in high school and track at her middle school, but she's being prohibited from trying out for the girls' teams. Her mother has brought a case against the state on her behalf, and now the Biden administration is stepping up and joining Becky's fight. Yesterday, the Department of Justice filed a statement of interest in the case, slamming the ban as a violation of federal law. Democratic Congresswoman Marie Newman of Illinois is an advocate for LGBTQ plus rights and on behalf of her transgender daughter, Evie. And she joins me now. Congresswoman, you and your daughter are on the cover of Teen Vogue for Pride Month. And there's a beautiful moment in the piece where you talk about when Evie first told you that she was trans. Talk about that moment and your reaction. You know, I, I think it was just pure joy when if you can imagine in any situation when someone finds themselves, finds their authenticity, it's joyful. So I just remember throwing my hands up in the ears and saying, uh, saying, yay, <laughs> because it was liberating and joyful. And I was so happy for her that she had found herself. At this point, Marjorie Taylor Greene's bullying behavior is well documented, but I think you know, what became a national story is when she put up an anti-trans sign outside of her office, which which is coincidentally directly across from yours. It's a lottery system. This wasn't planned out. What were you thinking when she did that? Did she have any idea that you have a background in anti-bullying? And what's the best way to respond to this kind of bullying? Because it's so mean spirited. Yeah, you know, uh, what I will say about the juxtaposition of our offices, I, I often say God has a funny sense of humor putting me <laughs> next to her. Uh, but um, that sign was highly reflective of who she is. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene told the world who she was with that hateful sign and her hateful behavior. So um, the good news is, is that um, the support we receive from this, uh, not just me, but other members of Congress that have family members that are transgender, the transgender uh, community and LGBTQ plus community writ large received amazing support, overwhelming support on this topic. 80% of our country is supportive of the Equality Act. So um, again, she just showed how small she is and how small the group of people is that um, feel uh, similarly to her. In terms of the Justice Department's decision to challenge this new law in West Virginia, which the governor says only affects 12 kids, which is such an odd response, um, what's your yeah. reaction to, to that development, that the Justice Department is saying, nope, we're not, we're not okay with this law, and they're stepping up to challenge it? Well, first of all, Governor, uh, I would say that there are far more than 12 children that are transgender in your state. Uh, just statistically, it's highly improbable um, that there aren't many more than that. So we'll start there. But secondly, it's so good that the DOJ is stepping in. They must say it's a shame that they have to step in, but they are. And that's what their job is. And they should be doing more of this. We have 33 states that have come up with these crazy laws that are in searching for a problem. Um, there is, it's a solution without a problem every single time. I think Zerlina, you said it beautifully um, when you talked about uh, Stephanie Rule's interview is that please show me one instance. The, uh, there's a series of AP reporters that went out and talked to all of these legislators and the authors of these horrible laws. And every single time it was, please share a study, uh, data, um, an episode, an anecdote. They couldn't share an anecdote of a problem. So therefore it does not exist. It's a red herring. 
Issues like this, they're in the news, but they affect you personally. When there's news of an anti-trans uh, bill being passed on the state level, what happens in your household? How, do, how does that uh, news get processed in a household that's directly impacted by these laws? It scares my daughter and it scares me. Now, the good news in Illinois, we are um, highly protected and it's a very welcoming um, state. That said, many states are not. So that's why it's incumbent about uh, on me and uh, my colleagues to make sure that we pass the Equality Act so no one's discriminated against. But it doesn't stop there. We, you know, we can pass the Equality Act, but we need to change hearts and minds in this country. This is a humanitarian rights issue. This is a civil rights issue. And it's just like anything else. We have to change hearts and minds and legislate. They help one another. And together, we're going to be a much happier nation if we're uh, not just accepting of one another, but embrace and respect and love one another. Embrace, love, and respect one another. That is a good message for a Friday night, and we'll have to leave it there. Congresswoman Marie Newman of Illinois, thank you so much for taking the time tonight, and congratulations on the cover. It's really beautiful. Well